Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Evan Foster. I'm the, the TerraCore member for the Attleboro Land Trust, um, and I'm welcoming you to the third episode of the Attleboro Land Trust live series on Facebook, all about land conservation and protection in the city of Attleboro. Um, I'm very excited to introduce our, introduce our guest today, Brian Hatch. Um, so Brian has been promoting Hike Attleboro, which is what he will be discussing today in the hope of making Attleboro known as a green city, which emphasizes the preservation and use of open space for the enjoyment of all residents. He has been a member of the Attleboro Land Trust Board of Directors for several, several years. His enthusiasm for preserving open space in Attleboro led to his appointment as an Attleboro Conservation Commissioner. And as an attorney, he has been involved in the draft, drafting of municipal ordinance, ordinances and bylaws having to do with environmental causes. He spoke at a recent city uh, city council hearing in favor of um, of the uh, increase in wetlands preservation zones to 75 feet. As you can tell, he is an active member in the conservation work happening in the city. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please add them into the comment section, um, and I will read them out to Brian at the end of at the end of his presentation. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Brian to start his presentation. Hi, Evan. Uh, nice to be with you today. And I'm really very excited to promote Hike Attleboro because it's really getting started after a year and a half or so. But uh, we're, we're just about at the point where we can have a grand opening of our trail network and get the uh, community involved. We already had some real good input from the city and it's going to be something that will really, uh, part of the revitalization of Attleboro. And uh, Attleboro Land Trust, City of Attleboro, Massachusetts Audubon Society, uh, we're all a coordinated group uh, as equal partners with all uh, land that we own individually. And so it's exciting to be able to get the whole network involved with uh, the various entities that own land in Attleboro for public purposes. Um, I'd like to show you a map, uh, if you can move that next slide forward, Evan, uh, to show you exactly how much open space we have in Attleboro. This is a part of a brochure that we put out as the Attleboro Land Trust, and it's basically a, a walkable woods and, and fields in the whole city of Attleboro. And you notice the green spaces and the orange spaces, uh, the orange colored spaces and also the pink colored spaces are all open, open areas, woods, fields, and that's open space, basically. And Attleboro is a, a very interesting city because it's an old industrialized city, famous for the jewelry industry, going back to the 1880s or so. Um, and now it's really vitalized itself into um, a modern city which is definitely emphasizing uh, green space, open space, and a sort of a new economic development that's, that's also focused on that kind of uh, enjoyment of, of open areas and, and the environment, um, really uh, much, even, much more than it used to as an industrialized city. It's really very exciting. Uh, I know the economic development director in the city, uh, Catherine Farrick, has worked with me closely on this, this particular uh, type of, of effort, Hike Attleboro, just as almost a theme for the renovation of Attleboro as a, uh, both an economic center and uh, a recreation center. So I'm, I'm very excited about this. You can see that the open spaces of Attleboro are, um, we still have quite a bit in spite of the fact that we're a city uh, there's quite a bit of open space owned either by the, the uh, Attleboro Land Trust, which are the spaces in green, um, the city of Attleboro, which, is the, which are colored in pink, and the Audubon, Mass Audubon Society, uh, and those are, are colored in yellow. And we're, we're acquiring more area all the time as far as the, both Attleboro, the Land Trust, Attleboro Land Trust, as well as uh, the city of Attleboro. So there are many more uh, things that we can and, and types of spaces that we can coordinate into the city. Uh, and so I'm excited about this effort. And I'll, maybe we'll um, go on to the next slide. I'll show you some of the goals of, of uh, Mike Attleboro. 
Uh, we would like to preserve the open space that we do have in Attleboro, and it's really uh, at this point in the city's history, it's getting to the point where development is uh, a prime objective of a lot of landowners and businesses and developments, developers, because uh, living in Attleboro is actually a, a prime spot to be able to jump on the train and go up to Boston and the prices for real estate and housing is a lot less than north of here. Um, so developers are anxious to build houses and clear land, uh, raise all the trees that are built up over many hundreds of years uh, to replace all the uh, farmland that used to dominate Attleboro uh, as an agricultural city before the Industrial Revolution in the late 1800s. So what the objective of, of both the um, land trusts and the city and to a certain extent, the Audubon Society is to preserve the open space that we have left. Um, I'm on the Conservation Commission also in Attleboro and we get um, proposals all the time from developers who would like to take over a lot of the open space for their own uh, use and to, to create housing or things like that. So what we do is we try to contact the landowners in uh, the city to try to see if we can preserve that space by making a deal for either purchasing the land, uh, having them donated, or putting a conservation restriction on it. And that allows the land to remain uh, in perpetuity as open space for people to enjoy. Because it is important to have um, new residents come into the city, but it's also important for them to recognize that they can go out and enjoy the land and the environment because it's a healthy thing to do and it's an enjoyable thing to do as far as getting out in the, the open air. I think people are realizing that across this country uh, about trying to take advantage of the environment. Uh, climate change is, is getting us to all recognize the importance of of open space as a, a way to control the warming of the planet. Trees also are basically a, are eat up carbon um, in the air and, and basically are a regeneration of the planet when you have open space and trees that can basically preserve some of our environment. Now, not only is it is important to use that open space and preserve it in Attleboro, but we have tremendous amount of hiking trails for a city this size. And that's probably people don't know about it that much. It's so that was what really attracted to me um, the theme of Hike Attleboro. Just a couple years ago, I got to know about it and got involved in the Attleboro Land Trust. And I got interested in the concept of open space throughout the city. And uh, I learned that there is this Hike Attleboro possibility that was being uh, looked at by the city and by the Audubon and by the land trust. And so I thought I'd get involved and just push this forward and see what I could do about uh, getting involved in Hike Attleboro as a way to, to connect trails that we all have as far as the individual entities. And it is interesting that uh, the three big landowners of open space are the Audubon, uh, Mass Audubon, um, the Attleboro Land Trust, and the city of Attleboro. Yeah. And the three don't necessarily have all their trails connecting and don't really have a whole theme for connecting them, but it's amazing that when you look at the lines in, in the city of Attleboro amongst the different trails, you can actually kind of walk from trail to trail and walk around the whole city in many ways. Um, and that's what I was excited about when I looked at all the land that is involved. Uh, when you looked at the previous slide, and I'll go to the next slide, we'll see that as well. Um, but what we have is uh, about 12, at least 12, this time, and it's growing, different areas which have uh, public trails for public use. Um, this is a map of, of the same map I, we had in the first slide. This is what I wanted to look at, and I'm not sure if, if Evan can look at some of the areas on the Park Street area, if he can point a cursor down there. Uh, that's on the right side of the screen. Um, basically, it's the east side of Attleboro, 
uh, the least developed area in the whole city. But you can see that, that uh, it really there are uh, probably, I think there's now five different spaces with public trails, actually six, and there are going to be more. Um, and so it's amazing that that is the Park Street area of Attleboro. It goes right in basically up through the um, more forested area, uh, some of the swamps and some of the open space in Attleboro that hasn't been developed. And it is amazing that uh, the properties that are off of that street go basically can be connected in many ways by walking from property to property. Um, if you go down uh, the Park Street area in Attleboro, which is uh, Route 118, actually, uh, if you go from Rehoboth up and to um, go out and eventually go to Norton, uh, that goes along that that um, that uh, black line that goes up through um, Attleboro on the southeast end. And you'll see the signs for Hike Attleboro going up that way. They were recently installed, but they point the direction towards um, each of the individual properties. And that goes from the land trust properties in the south, all the way up to Audubon properties in the middle, which are the yellow coated properties. And also on the western side, uh, there are the city properties, which uh, also it's a tremendous amount of land uh, that is owned by the city or used by either the water authority or Wamsutta well, School in that direction. Um, and it goes along Oak Hill Avenue, but that area to the west actually could lead you, if you look at the, the marking that goes all the way from the Park Street area, all the way to the west, to the end point where there's a green space uh, just there, that's the Leech Wildlife Sanctuary. And it's about five miles or maybe four miles from there to La Salette Shrine which is on Park Street, and everybody knows about La, Sh La Salette Shrine because it's a, a, basically it's well known internationally in many ways for being uh, an, a really a great point for uh, anybody who's a Catholic or anybody who's interested in religion to go to that sh shrine and relax. It happens to be a center area for all the open space in that area too. Uh, there's a nice area behind that that's owned by the Audubon Society. And if you keep on going west of there, along that marked line, you can go all the way through the uh, Handy Street Conservation Area, which is the pink area, which is owned by the city. and has some wonderful trails back there. And if you keep on going west, you get into more city land over by where the Water Authority and over by where Wamsutta School is. And actually, there's in, there is an old golf course there called the Locust Valley Country Club, which is something that we would like eventually to preserve and, and own as the city because we do have what's called a recreation restriction on that. Uh, many years ago, that was, that was uh, the city had put that on there in order to uh, allow the owner of the golf course to continue functioning. That allows the city a right of first refusal to buy that eventually. And that would allow us to go all the way over to the west. If you cross the street, there's some woods in there that goes to that little green space. And it's only about 16 acres, but it's the Leech Wildlife Sanctuary. And that's a nice little area. Um, it's, it's more in the developed area of Attleboro, but it's also in the woods, I happen to live right near the Leech Sanctuary, so I can actually walk in the woods up there. And it's a great, a fascinating little property, actually. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But it was founded um, basically through donation um, by the, um, the people who are in the Leech family, the uh, Leech and Garner, uh, jewelry industry and jewelry company were the, basically the founders of that property and they were uh, Ted Leach who was one of the um, the next the uh, generation 
uh, which inherited all that land. He was the founder of the Attleboro Land Trust back in the 1990s. And if you see that that property is uh, basically it's it's open area, but the only reason why it is open is because in the 1990s, um, Ted Leach and Charlie Adler, who's also a member of the land trust, uh, got together with the city and they decided to make sure the developer didn't develop about 300 housing units right in that open space. That is how the land trust got developed, is that all of a sudden the citizens rose up and said, development, this is enough. We gotta start preserving open space. So in the 30 years since then, that's what Alboro Land Trust and the city have been trying to do. And it really is uh, an excellent opportunity for us to, to appreciate the environment. I'm gonna move on next. Um, oh, first of all, uh, before, well, I, I can uh, just refer back to that trail a network for just a minute because um, one of the reasons why that I got involved with this network of trails around Attleboro, why it's so exciting, is that there's a town, Westboro, north of here, that has what's called the Westboro Charm Bracelet. And that is founded by Don Byrne uh, about 20 years ago. Basically, he decided there should be a ring around Westboro of all the trails to connect that uh, city. And they have a certain uh, about the same amount of open space that we do. And so I, I talked to him and I th said, I looked at the maps. I said, wow, we could do that in Attleboro. We could connect the trails, do some parts on streets just to get across some streets to properties. But we could do the same thing that they do up there. And that's what really got me excited in the, this particular type of, of network. So I, I think that that's one of uh, the reasons why it came into existence was me talking to them and seeing how they did that in Westboro. And if we can go to the next slide then, then I can um, show you some of the properties that we have that can be featured on this High Catero network. And I'll go over them individually, but you can see how many properties there are. In Attleboro, I mean, the size of the city of Attleboro, it's very unique because we have so many open spaces. Uh, I, I think it's it's really great because we're sort of in the midpoint of cities in uh, in Massachusetts and New England. To the south of us is Pawtucket in Rhode Island. It's very uh, much of a history of industrialization, but a very urban area. And uh, to the north of us. We have uh, Plainville and also Rehoboth just to the south, which is a lot more rural. But uh, we have in Attleboro, uh, an urban urban uh, area from many years ago, but it's also uh, something, a place that has a lot of open spaces. So you can see to have uh, at least a dozen areas in a city this size where you can hike around in public uh, use is really kind of fascinating. And each one of these properties will have unique aspects to it that I wanna mention. But what I'm going to do next is go from slide to slide to, to show you, this is from a sort of a south to north trail that could go from the Richardson Preserve to the Vaughn Memorial Forest, to the Colin Preserve, to the Oak Knoll Wildlife Sanctuary, to the Handy Street Conservation Area, to the Attleboro Springs and to the O'Donnell Preserve. You could actually walk almost four miles north um, and do you know several weeks of visits to that area. And you could, and when it's finished, you could actually walk all the way up there and start at the Rehoboth line, um, have basically a, a coffee at Dunkin' Donuts there or a meal at the one of the restaurants in on the Rehoboth line on Route 118 and go up and hike four miles north and through various properties and get on Park Street and have an ice cream at the end of the O'Donnell property. So it, it's gonna be exciting. I really am excited to, to have this Hike Attleboro network start to come into play this summer. So we can uh, move on and I'll, I'll show you some of the, this is the prime property. This is probably the one of the southernmost properties we have that's open for use called the Richardson Nature Preserve in the Attleboro Land Trust. 
and why it's so fascinating is that um, there's also a house on the Richardson Preserve called the Barrows House, which is the oldest house in Attleboro. But it's an old farmhouse and it's been well preserved. And it's on one corner of this lovely uh, almost uh, 70 acres of a Richardson Nature Preserve. Uh, it opened up a couple years ago by the Attleboro Land Trust through a generous donation uh, by the Richardson family. And it's a very well-maintained trail network of uh, uh, various, uh, it's an open field you can see, as well as uh, there are trails which have bird houses and uh, there's wildlife in there you can see. It's, it's just a fascinating property with much history of going back into the 1700s with the farmland and the development of the land there. Um, we have one person in the land trust who really devotes himself to the history of the Richardson Preserve. And if you ever um, see any of the newsletters that uh, his name is Bill Lewis, I think he did one of the presentations for Evans Group here. Um, he goes into the history of the Barrows House and the Barrows family going many, many years ago with this farmland and how it they lived off the land, they cut all the trees down and then they let them grow up again. Now they're foresting again, as well as some of the open space. The Richardson Nature Preserve on Walmart Street is really a fascinating place to go. And I, I recommend that highly uh, to go there. Um, maybe we can uh, move on to the next property. I just want to do a time check, Brian. We're about 20 minutes in. Just like oh, Okay. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go fairly quickly. Uh, I'll go fast because that was the prime um, area. Going further north, the Vaughn Memorial Forest involves going up a little part of the road. Another uh, nice property in the woods, which uh, the Vaughn family uh, handed down just a couple years ago. Right across from the Vaughn property is what is called the Coleman uh, preserve and the Coleman Reservation and that is um, also it's right across the street from Vaughn and you can go up there it's there's uh, some boardwalks built by an Eagle Scout project and eventually that property will connect all the way up to from Steer Street which is where it's located all the way possibly to Bishop Street where you can where the uh, Blist area is and uh, that will take some time but um, it, it is some place that we're looking at at this point. Uh, if you can go across the street, uh, uh, you can see in the next slide, we'll show you some of the other properties uh, that are involved. The Oko Wildlife Sanctuary, that's an Audubon property. And a couple of interesting points about that is right in the middle, if you see the middle slide, um, there is a, a lake called Lake Talakega in the Okno Wildlife Sanctuary named after a Talakeda uh, Casino that was built back in the 19, early 1900s. Used to be on a trolley line going along Oak Hill Avenue into Providence and connecting with a well-known casino there. Um, it went out of business in the 1910s, 1920s, but look what they left behind. There's a, right in that center slide, there's a set of wheels uh, from an old trolley and that's located right in Talakega Lake. It's been there for a hundred years now and our story in Bill Lewis confirmed that it was indeed a, an iron wheels of a trolley that's buried in the muck there. Nobody's going to disturb it but um, it's such an interesting point and so that's that's something that the Audubon Society has very well maintained trails there and so that should be interesting to go to too. Uh, the next slide up, you can look, it connects to the west to what's uh, the city Handy Street Conservation Area. It's being developed a, a little more now, but that is an area that will eventually go all the way to the west uh, to Locust Street. And it's a wonderful um, woodland there that a lot of people do use right now. And the city has been uh, good enough to help us develop that as part of High Caterboro. Uh, the next uh, slide, uh, we'll, we'll go towards another uh, very well-maintained property, the Attleboro, um, uh, Attleboro the Audubon, uh, Mass Audubon Society has that Attleboro Springs Wildlife Sanctuary right back of La Salette, as a matter of fact. 
that's where a lot of people, including the handicapped, can go on handicap accessible trails uh, throughout that woodland area, and it's really a wonderful place to go. Um, the next uh, slide you'll you'll see is the O'Donnell Preserve, and uh, your host Evan is uh, right now looking at at uh, getting the trails open to that preserve, and that um, is to the north of of where I mentioned the Coleman property, and it's right near. Fenberg Field, which is uh, an old recreational field for a school, and Blisteri is within sight distance, which we hope to have a connection with, to help them, uh, help Pike Adderall, and Sturdy Memorial Hospital, which is another benefactor, hopefully we'll be in touch with soon. And okay, the next slide, um, uh, let's see. Next I would, that's the downtown area, Larson Woodlands. And you should check that out. It is a favorite area of mine. I walk there every day at lunch. There's a, a boardwalk in the downtown area that allows you to go all the way from Olive Street, all the way along the 10 Mile River, which is a wonderful old river that, you know, had been polluted a bit, but it's been cleaned up. And you can see it, it goes up to this pond called Canix Pond, which is, uh, right in the middle of downtown Adderall, but a wonderful place for wildlife, including great blue herons. And uh, there's the Mechanics Pond Dam there. And you can really uh, appreciate nature right in the middle of the city in Larson Woodlands. And that, that's a real uh, wonderful place to go. Uh, we do have some other areas too that you might be interested in. Uh, Nickerson Walking Woods in the northern part of the city. It's an excellent place for dog walkers and anyone else who enjoys the fields and old farmland. It used to be a, a horse farm that the Nickersons gave. Um, and the next one that we have is, uh, you can, if you can move that, the Leech Wildlife Sanctuary. I did mention that uh, from the Leech family. A smaller area, but that is on the left. There's a huge granite rock from left over from the glaciers. Uh, there are uh, numerous, a lot of wildlife, and that's really near where the uh, Alberta Land Trust is founded. And it's a, it's a nice little area over off uh, Oak Hill Avenue and right near actually Route 152. So it's accessible if you're traveling in, in downtown too. And the last one I think that we could look at would be, uh, the next one would be the Lawrence Wildlife Preserve. And I do want to mention that because it's a wonderful, pristine marsh area. And that is, is a wonderful place. We had a, a naturalist uh, named Gary Croft to give us a, a tour out there. And you can see that doe that's on the left side is right in the middle of the wonderful marshland that you can see in the center slide. And it's just a fascinating area. Um, there are there's an old, a couple old trees right in the middle of the marsh that are interconnected, even though they're about 50 feet apart. It's really a, a great area to appreciate nature. A little different from the rest of the preserves, actually, because it's so, uh, it's not as developed a, a, as as much, but it's some great place to a great place to see some wildlife. Um, so I, I think that uh, if you move it on to the next slide, just wanted to let you know that this is going to be a great a season for Hike Adderall to get moving. Uh, first of all, the Audubon Society has a new trail opening up at the Oak Knoll uh, Preserve that is one of the connecting trails in the Hike Adderall network. Uh, another thing in the downtown area, the 10 Mile River Guided Hike by Ben Cody from the Friends of the 10 Mile River. And that will be taking place in June. That'll be part of our downtown network, which uh, the city's economic development uh, director is very excited about um, because it will attract businesses as well as residents. And then our prime grand opening, the Hike Attleboro Day on July 17th, where we hope to basically have uh, people um, go around and see all our properties there. Um, and I'll tell you just a, a little bit about the schedule there, but the other event is the O'Donnell Preserve opening in July hopefully in July or August. And uh, Evan Foster has uh, been great about trying to get that underway. I know we're gonna have a, 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 a trail making event yesterday, uh, tomorrow to actually try to, to see if we can 
make those trails very well publicly accessible, and that should be fun too later on. Um, okay, I'll just uh, I'll mention briefly uh, after in, in the next slide what our goal is for um, the opening for Hike Attleboro Day. Uh, that should be actually going to be uh, July 17th. It's a, a different date than is there, but we'll be publicizing that. You'll hear a lot more about it. It's going to be at our prime location, the Richardson Preserve. Uh, we'll have individual hikers, basically guides, to go take people around the individual trails that they're maintaining. Uh, it would be fascinating ability to go for hikes. We'll, we'll do what's called a selfie scavenger hunt, where you'll see some unique spots on individual properties, say part of a boardwalk, part of a huge glacial boulder, um, those trolley wheels, see if you can find those and take a selfie in front of those. And then you can submit that to somebody at the Land Trust or Hike Attleboro, and there'll be prizes for whoever takes the most selfies of the unique spots points of interest on all of the properties we're using. Check out those t-shirts too. Uh, we're gonna have those available. Uh, they're going to be ordered sometime soon and that'll be kind of nice for the summer, I would say, to have one of those t-shirts to wear on, wear on the trail. Um, that's that's a, a lot of what I was going to cover today and just wanna make sure you know that this is some, these are some of the unique points you might be able to check out for that scavenger hunt. I mentioned Mechanics Pond at Larson Woods. There are blue heron out there, and I've seen them. It's great to be able to photograph one of those. Uh, the trolley wheels at Lake Talakega, uh, the big rock at Leech Wildlife Sanctuary, and those twin trees I mentioned at the Lawrence Wildlife Preserve. And this is something you should definitely take advantage of because there are bird houses on Richardson Preserve that are basically it's almost a contest that uh, a lot of the local um, scout troops and other people have, have set up. And if you can photograph a bird at the birdhouse, that'll be uh, some bonus points for you now. So that contest will start at our opening event, but you can get bonuses for going there early during the next month and a half. So I, I challenge you to do that. So hopefully you can get involved. We'll, We'll be advertising that more as, as we get together. So um, I've enjoyed presenting to you. Just make sure that you visit Hike Attleboro. The three sponsors, City of Attleboro, Mass Audubon, and Attleboro Land Trust, are really getting together to do a great job at promoting this, this whole idea. And I welcome you to explore the trails this summer, come to our events, and get involved. Uh, you can Sign up for memberships at the Attleboro Land Trust or just uh, pre go to the properties and maybe mention us on the internet that we're a good place to go to in Attleboro. So I'll, I'll uh, turn it back to Evan if he has any questions or anybody else has anything. I'd be glad to answer. Awesome. Thank you so much, Brian, for presenting. Um, and if anyone does have questions, please just type them in the comment section. I'll be able to read them out for Brian. Um, but I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, Brian, and then we can, we can wrap up. Um, uh, my first question kind of goes back to what you were just saying. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the best ways for people to get involved with the Hike Attleboro Initiative. Would this be either a place to donate or organizations, it sounds like Mass Audubon, ALT, and the city um, to get involved by volunteering? Um, so I guess if you could just keep talking about that. Yeah, the Attleboro Land Trust has their own website, and you can get involved as a member or do a donation or maybe submit an idea for a landowner that might want to donate a property. Uh, so that's AttleboroLandTrust.org. And uh, we do have a HikeAttleboro.org website that will be uh, finalized sometime in the near future. You can go to that, and there will probably be places for you to get involved there, as well as directions to all the different properties. And so those are ways you can get involved. Come to our opening day, sign up as a member, sign up to uh, perhaps be a, um, a, a steward of a property. And um, it's a, a good way to get involved. You'll see signage too from uh, for High Cattle in the next uh, month or so. So 
that should be a way to get involved. Great. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's uh, very exciting. There's definitely a lot, a lot going on and definitely many ways for people to get involved. Um, cool. So I, I, my, I guess my final question, if no one else has questions, is if you want to just elaborate a little bit more on how you think Ike Attleboro is really going to push um, the city of Attleboro towards uh, the more a more walkable city, in what ways do you think you're kind of promoting promoting it as a as a safe place to walk, and also um, you know just a destination for people to come and visit and kind of experience what uh, the city of Attleboro? Yeah, I think we've been working with the economic development director Catherine Ferrick, and she's excited with this combination of of business development as well as residential uh, basically uh, open space development uh, one thing i did mention earlier and and i'll emphasize again the downtown area is going to be a prime area for people moving in and businesses moving in we have several law uh, large residential bu buildings going up but it's a place to hike at lunch uh, you should try to get involved. That's what uh, Catherine uh, Farrick has mentioned, is that businesses enjoy getting into the downtown area uh, where they can have the workers hike at lunch and just um, it's, it's a good place to live. Um, and then the other areas in the outskirts, in the rural areas, that's the second part of the green city that Adderall hopefully will become because that's still rural, very forested, some beautiful marshes and lakes. So um, that's what we, we still see it as a green city, a well-rounded city. Great. Um, well, I think we, yeah, I think we've talked a lot, uh, about Hike Attleboro today, which is really great. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say, Brian, before I wrap it up? I think I'd just like you to get out on the trails and enjoy, enjoy the summer. Now that we've gotten past a lot of this pandemic and people are getting vaccinated, Get out, enjoy the fresh air. I know that's what I did over the past year to keep me sane. So uh, I think it's even more important to get out uh, and enjoy yourselves this summer. So. Great. Yeah, I definitely, I 100% agree with that. It's, the weather is turning turning nicer. The sun is coming out. Temperature is warming up. So I definitely encourage everyone to get out there. Um, and yeah, so before I wrap up, I just want to mention a couple of things. So Brian had talked about a work party or a volunteer event happening tomorrow on the O'Donnell property from nine to 12, which I will be leading. Um, and we're basically gonna be clearing the trail and installing some signposts for the O'Donnell property to get it ready to be opened up for the public. So if you are interested, there's more information on our website, the Um, So you can visit, uh, visit it there. Um, I also just wanna reiterate that uh, Hike Attleboro Day, Attleboro Day is on July 17th. So please put that into your calendars and just um, ha uh, be ready to come and enjoy a beautiful day. Um, also, as you start taking photos of the landmarks, um, if you want to, please upload them to social media and use the hashtag um, Hike Attleboro. That way we can all see the amazing photos and selfies that we're all taking on these great properties. Um, so I'll definitely be doing that and I'm sure Brian will be too. So we, we definitely want you all to participate in that and get, get some photos out there and also to visit the property. Um, so once again, thanks Brian and everyone for joining. Um, and we'll see, I will see you all next week for another video, another episode. Oh, thanks so. very much for hosting this, Evan. You're doing a great job at helping us out, getting the publicity out. And awesome. Getting the public yep. to know about this. Okay. Definitely. That's, that's the goal. All right. Take care, everyone. Okay. Thank you.